This isn't real, a real soapbox, it's a fruit <laughs> vegetable box, but it'll do the job. Um, thanks uh, for coming, as you know. Uh, early voting is incredibly uh, important option, and we've been working really hard to get people out uh, to vote and to early vote. And we're really excited also to be uh, joined here by some of our uh, great uh, local and state uh, candidates. Um, First of all, I want to introduce uh, Sam Locke. He's running for uh, state auditor, and he may not want to stand on the soapbox, uh, but we do want him to give the opportunity to say a few words. How about one quick? Rick has a thing for elevated speeches. The last time I spoke in Monroe County, we were on the uh, staircase there in uh, the Tower School. Thanks for having us again. Monroe County is an important part of our election strategy, as you all well know. As Rick and Forth, it is 10% of all the early voting in the state of Indiana has happened right here in Monroe County, and that's huge for you all. It's huge for our party, and we appreciate your support. We're talking about how to make the auditor's office work harder for you, save more money, be more transparent, and call out waste as it happens. Good common sense ideas that both sides of the political aisle can agree on. Thank you again for your support. Help us encourage people to walk just across the street and continue that uh, pace of early voting. And uh, we're going to win right here in Monroe County, and that's going to lead the way across the entire state. Thank you very much. We also have uh, with us Pete Buttigieg. He's running for state treasurer. We're really glad to have him here, and uh, he, of course, is welcome to use the soapbox uh, or not. Please welcome Pete. I'm always on a soapbox anyway, so I might as well actually have a physical one under us. This isn't such a bad day to be outside, is it? I think it's uh, not too bad, and it's a good day to vote, too. You know, yes! Folks like Rick work 25-hour days in order to make sure that everybody gets out and uh, registers their vote for uh, the, the good uh, guys, as we would say. And if uh, we vote early, that means he only has to work a 24-and-a-half-hour day uh, when Tuesday rolls around. So let's make sure that uh, we make it just a little bit easier for all our uh, civically engaged folks uh, by taking care of it early so we don't have to knock and drag quite as much on uh, next Tuesday. Howdy. It's great to be here among friends. <laughs> Uh oh. Well, sure, it's a soapbox. That's it. I have known Pete Buttigieg from what we call him since he was born. I live in South Bend. I was a Notre Dame English professor. This is a great guy. He's got the right principles. He's very, very smart. He's going to do terrific things for our state. <laughs> Thank you. I just want to tell you a quick story about something that happened to me uh, a little while ago in the campaign. Uh, I was campaigning and I had a really important uh, supporter who I needed to sit down with, talk about how we were going to uh, get the vote out in his county. And uh, when I got to where we were supposed to meet, he said, uh, I found his number because I didn't see him, called him up on his cell phone. He said, I'm sorry, but I can't come to where you are because uh, I can't leave my field right now. Corn's coming in early. I don't have as much help as I thought I did, and so I just can't leave my field. And I said, well, I'm sorry I'm not going to be able to meet you because I was really looking forward to it, but I guess we can find another, another time to do it. And he said, what do you mean you're not going to be able to meet me? All I said was I can't leave my field. I didn't say that we can't meet. So 20 minutes later, I was in the cab of a tractor on a 100-degree day in southern Indiana, doing about four rows is what it took uh, for us to get the job done, and we uh, had our meeting and talked about what we had to talk about. <laughs> the moral of the story in my mind is that uh, Hoosiers are pretty good at doing two things at once. What our party has had to learn how to do is to govern and do politics at the same time. We're pretty good at governing. We've tried it our way. We've tried it their way. Our way happens to be better. It gets better results. More people are working. People are happier. People are better educated. We've tried it our way. We've tried it their way, and our way works better. But now we've got to do politics our way, too. And politics our way isn't billion-dollar air wars polluting the, air, uh, the airways with uh, there's kids here with garbage. 
It's <laughs> meant to distract folks from what's really important. Our style of politics is coming together, reaching out to friends and strangers, especially strangers, uh, <laughs> when you can do your good old-fashioned retail politics, not dividing others against each other, but saying how can we multiply our abilities as citizens when we come together and uh, talk out our differences and encourage one another to do things like go down one block from here and register our vote early uh, for the folks who are going to make a difference. So let's learn to do two things at once. Let's govern and do politics, and let's do politics in the most uplifting tradition of the Democratic Party. Thank you. Thank you, Pete. Uh, we have a few uh, other candidates that may or may not want to uh, have something to say. Uh, Chris? Would you like to say something, Chris? Sure. All right. Our uh, prosecutor and next prosecutor, Chris Gall. Hey, thanks, everyone, for coming out here. For those of you who voted early, thank you so much. You make our jobs easier campaigning. Um, there's been a lot that's happened in the prosecutor's office in the last four years. I think it's something this community should be proud of. When I took office, things weren't so good. There was a bad relationship not only between the prosecutor's office and the community, but also the police agencies in the prosecutor's office. And that's bad for the community. Not only have we repaired that damage, but we've reached out to other partners in the community and built collaborations to address important public safety issues like crimes against the elderly, dropout prevention, sexual assault, and several other issues. I'm very proud of what we've been able to accomplish and my team of experienced professionals have, have been able to accomplish in the prosecutor's office. We need to keep that stuff moving forward. In my second term, I'm going to create a child advocacy center in our community to better serve child victims and child witnesses of violent crimes. It's something that we need to do and we should have done a long time ago. We're going to make it happen next year. We've been working with a group of community stakeholders to get this off the ground, do the fundraising, get everybody together. And that's, again, something that we're going to be proud of when we're able to do it. And it takes us working together as a community. That's what I've been able to do as prosecutor, and that's what we need to keep moving forward with our community. community. So it matters. Thanks very much. Chris Gall, our prosecutor and next prosecutor. Uh, I see uh, Sam Allison in the audience. I see Sam Allison in the audience. He's running for uh, county council. Sam. I have not decided to do any weight testing on the sofa. Let it go. I'm down five pounds in the campaign so far. Twenty more pounds to go. It happened four years ago. Going to go for it again. Folks, can you believe that we have a state government that wants to spend a billion dollars on an atrocity known as I-69 while we are firing teachers right and left? I don't know what role I can play as your county council member to put an end to this, but I will do whatever I can to stop I-69, support our schools, preserve our green spaces, protect our environment, and enhance our social services. Thank you all very much. The most important thing about our little rally here today is for everybody to vote. Not just for you to vote, but to get your friends, your family, everyone you know to go out to vote. Another great thing about our rally today is you can vote right now. You can walk just a block away and vote in the Curry Building. It's that easy. It probably will never be as easy because you're already here. Just walk down the Curry Building and you can vote. We've got all kinds of information here. We even have a very helpful map that will say that you are right here and voting is right here. Um, it couldn't be more clear. So thank you all uh, for being here. Thanks for our uh, great candidates and all of their support. You have our support uh, as well. Go out, vote, get your friends to vote, get your family to vote. Let's make it happen. Thank you.